Let's discuss some of the questions from the geography net paper, which was held on 12th October. Now the paper, a lot of students thought it was difficult, but in reality, it was a little different. Now this question is based on the concepts of remote sensing, where we focused on image enhancement. Now under the linear contrast, there are two methods, minimum, maximum, and then you have saturation stretch. So under saturation stretch, we enhance the color of a three band input uh, by producing an output which has have more saturated colors under maximum minimum stretch what we do is we understand the maximum and the minimum values the brightness of the, the brightness in terms of maximum and minimum and try to understand here so this is an original graph and this is how the stretch graph would look like so a and e are the correct options for the linear contrast image enhancement uh, techniques and this has been covered under the section on uh, remote sensing that we have done in the study material now one important question is on life expectancy now here estimates of life expectancy can be obtained from life tables that's very correct if the life expectancy improves what does that mean person who was able to live let's say 60 years previously now is able to live 70 years that means the aging population would increase so this would cause population aging or we could say the geriatric population to increasing bringing a huge dependence on the working population right so a is correct b is correct infant mortality rate is defined as number of children dying below the age of one year uh, one year per thousand live births so per thousand live births so c is incorrect here and who proposed the demographic transition theory it was proposed by Neunstein. malthus uh, gave the malthus theory of population so again this is incorrect a and b becomes the correct option so this was related to demography and population geography the next is another important question on types of succession from ecology so we have seen what is autogenic allogenic induced autotropic heterotropic succession so these are all types of successions now here when i'm saying that succession begins on a place which is rich in inorganic content if it is rich in inorganic content it is a autotropic succession as simple as that when it is heterotropic it would be rich in the organic content bacteria viruses fungi so uh, that is a heterotropic so if it is heterotropic that means it is rich in what it is rich in organic content if it is autotropic it is rich in inorganic content as simple as that so the basic things if you remember you should be able to attempt the question the next is a very interesting question you have the markings for the various passes of kashmir uh, and you have to identify which pass is in the correct order so the first one here is the karakoram pass followed by the kurata then you have the lanka pass changla pass uh, the next one is the umsai followed by banihal peer panjal and then zozila pass in the region of Ladakh. So here we have uh, the correct order of the sequence so following which you have first which becomes the correct order and here we have marked some of the major passes. So here uh, the Karata pass, Lanka pass, Changla pass, Banihal pass, Peer Panjal and Zuzila have been marked. Besides that, you have Khadungla Pass uh, in the regions of Ladakh, Burzila Pass uh, in the regions of Park occupied Kashmir, it is uh, Mintak Pass, Parpik Pass, Zunzer pa Pass, Aghil Pass. Uh, so, those are again important. And towards the side of Tibet, it is another important pass which is Imisla. La means pass, as simple as that. So wherever you have the word La, that means a pass, a, pa a passage through the mountains. A very uh, question, very important question. It's not just the region of Kashmir or Jammu Kashmir that you must be familiar with the passes, but again that is applicable to the regions of Sikkim, Uttarakhand, uh, uh, Utanchal. So all of those areas which are Arunachal Pradesh, Bombdilla Pass. So you have uh, the borders with the uh, foreign nations, these passes become extremely important and sensitive. Nadula Pass in Sikkim. So those are some of the major passes. The next is Crop Diversification Index. Now, two important things. Crop Diversification Index Summation of x square divided by summation x the whole square. There is difference, right? If I say x, x is what here? So the question is asking that only. So x is the total cropped area, right? If I say my total cropped area is 100 hectares, okay? So what would be my crop diversification index? It would be 
100 uh, my area let's say is 100 200 300 right so what i do is i take the summation of x squares that is 100 square plus 200 square plus 300 square in the numerator and in the denominator it would be how much it would be 600 the whole square and this would give me what this would give me the crop diversification index now again important is SID which is Simpson's index of diversification which is 1 minus summation x square divided by summation x the whole square and this gives you the index of diversification again given by Simpson so there are various formulations which we use but x here in all the cases is used by the total area occupied by each of the crops in the region and this helps to identify the crop diversification index. So this was again a question from agricultural geography. So from the agricultural geography, crop combination, crop diversification are some of the important topics. Next time you can have Dewey's index um, as one of the important questions for crop combination, Weaver's model as another important one for crop combination. And then we also need to understand certain theories which were part and uh, part of the question paper this time. Overall, I can say the question paper was not that difficult. If you have a thorough in-depth knowledge of the concepts, the question uh, and the content becomes very smooth for your, uh, for attempting your answers and practice at least five years papers below is the link for uh, detailed question bank. So you can just go for, uh, go there, the questions are free, practice as much as you can and have confidence before appearing for the examination. We'll be discussing many important sessions for NET before your upcoming examination. Stay tuned.